do ba do bu da ba da be da ba da ba da ba ba da da ba da ba da ba da ba da ba 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 da ba 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 da ba 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 da ba 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 da ba 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 da ba 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 da ba ba da ba hey guys <laughs> how you doing hopefully you're doing great this wonderful day of whatever day this is um. I, firstly, I just wanted to show you something as we started as we start today. It's a very random picture, and when I saw it, it I was slightly weirded out and also laughed at the same time. So I just would like to see or like to show it to you. I know I can't see your reactions right now, but I'd like to show it to you. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> when I saw this picture, I just said, that, that is random. I don't know, what would you call this? A dorse? Um, I don't know. I don't know what you call this. Anyways, let's move on. Okay, we do have a free ride today. So please take out a piece of paper and we are going to get going down on this free ride. Okay, so I'll give you some time to take that out. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to show you a picture. And what I need you, well actually I'm going to show you the picture first. And then I'll instruct you or we'll, we'll instruct you in what you need to do. Okay, so there you go. Now, when you first look at this picture, you might not uh, think it's really anything unique or weird or anything of that nature. In fact, some of you may have guessed that it is already, it, it's some form of cheese. This is cheese actually, but the type of cheese is what I want to tell you about. If I remember the name right, this is Casu Marzu, I believe. Casu Marzu. It is also known as the maggot cheese. You did not uh, mishear me. It is the maggot cheese. This is the type of cheese that some people eat that has live maggots in it. <laughs> yes, there's people in the world that eat. Uh, this type of cheese. So here is what our free write is. Okay. What I'd like you to do is imagine that you have eaten this cheese. You've eaten a slice of cheese full of live maggots and everything. And I know most of us, and maybe perhaps all of us, have not eaten a piece of this cheese, but maybe some of us have. But just imagine you have. Now, what I want you to do is you're going to write a portion of a review about this cheese. But the portion you're going to write is, let's say, the second body paragraph of your review. So that means you have skipped the introduction and the first body paragraph but you're going to write this second body paragraph as if you have already written the introduction and first body paragraph. Does that make sense? So imagine you already wrote the introduction. Imagine you already wrote the first body paragraph. Now you're going to write the second body paragraph in your review about this cheese. Okay. So that is your free write. Remember, it can be a brief paragraph, but it's your second body paragraph about this cheese this maggot filled cheese can you just imagine eating that and I, I don't know if any of you have eaten it we've never talked about this before but if you have you're a little bit more at advantage um, because you kind of know what it is but if we haven't of course we can use our imaginations so that means you've already written the introduction that means you already have written your thesis and you already made a claim and a stance on this cheese and so what would your second body paragraph be? Okay, so let's pause for a second and go for that. Okay, 
So I hope you you probably noticed some things and as you've read those. And if we uh, haven't shared already, let's do that. Okay, but you might have shared already. Um, but you probably noticed a few things. There might have been a tendency to try and introduce the cheese again. But remember, you have already done that. You've already introduced it. So let, well, anyways, let's go on. Make sure your name's on that. You'll turn that in at the end of this little uh introductory thing we're doing right now okay so let's move on the paper yeah i know that's where your heart is saying right now when you think of the paper the rhetorical analysis paper you're just so looking forward to writing this i know okay <laughs> uh this is going to be great you guys are going to do so good on it and it's going to be beneficial it's going to be extremely beneficial and it'll be a good process now we've talked a lot about the paper coming up. We know what we're supposed to do, but getting all this structure down and putting our ideas onto a page, that's what we're gonna talk about right now. Okay, so let's remind ourselves what needs to be in this paper. You will be getting a rubric for it once you get back from Thanksgiving and we'll discuss that uh, when the time comes. But let's review just the basics again. Okay, one, it's two to three pages. Times New Roman font, size 12 font, and just keep in mind this is not size 12.1 or 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Please do not do that. Okay, and I'm not saying anyone has done that at all. Okay, um, but just know and through like teaching in various places, I remember when teaching at UVU. Um, you hear stories and people that do try to do that sometimes just to make their paper a little bit longer. And so please don't do that. It's not an honest thing to do. Okay? And I'm not expecting anyone to do that. Uh, size 12 font, double spaced. You do need that title page. Remember that title page is on there. Okay. And that does not count as one of the two to three pages. Let me repeat that. It does not count as one of the two or three pages. Okay, header with last name and page number, and that's in the top right corner, starting on the first page after the title page. Okay, and let me know if you have any complications with that. All right, let's go into a little bit more of than just these few structural things. Introduction, okay, you need your introduction to your Amazon object, uh, which includes the thesis, you need that thesis there. And where does it go? It is the last sentence of the introduction. The last sentence of the introduction. Okay, let's not forget that. The thesis must be there. It must be identifiable as well. When you turn in your paper and we go through your paper, it must be very identifiable where your thesis is it should be easily found and it should not be confusing it should not be is it in the second paragraph it should be at the end of the introduction the end of the introduction paragraph okay body paragraphs so we're going to refer to that a little bit and you guys have probably or perhaps talked about that already in some ways with mr cutler uh, but if not we are going to we're going to just go over that a little bit again and also in your conclusion, you need to recast your thesis. We have not talked about recasting yet. You have a little handout probably that was handed out to you that does refer to this idea of reviewing or restating your thesis. Okay. And when we say restate our thesis, we don't mean we just put our thesis in our conclusion again. Recasting is different than restating recasting is different than restating okay and so we'll get to that not in this powerpoint but we'll get to it a little later okay so let's go into a couple things that we need to remind ourselves Ooh. now as you can see uh the top left says you purchased this item on june 27th i thought just to give you guys maybe a little bit of a better understanding of what we're looking for in this paper we kind of do a brief one together. And now I know we kind of did that with the McDonald's French fries and we've done it a couple times in class. But I'm gonna give you a more detailed idea of 
how we can do this and review an object on Amazon. Now, this is something that I actually bought. I bought it, as you can see, on June 27, 2018, of this year during the summer. And I thought I'd buy a microphone and just to um, fiddle around with the idea of podcasting and recording different things, voiceovers here and there. And I thought it'd be helpful to have a microphone, just something I'd be doing on the side as a, a hobby every once in a while. So I bought this one and it's $30. Okay, as you can see right here. I think it was a little bit more when I bought it, but I just looked this up recently and it says $30 right there if you have a Prime membership. Okay, so uh, USB microphone, Fifini or Fifine or Fifine. Okay, metal condenser recording microphone for laptop, Mac, or Windows, cardioid, cardioid, yeah, studio recording vocals, voiceover streaming, broadcast, and YouTube videos. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. And so this is the object I bought. It doesn't I, this picture doesn't give you everything of its ideas or of its uh, capabilities like down here. Okay, we have the plug and play USB recording microphone. It gives you kind of all the specs as we would call it, the specifications. Okay, and so this is what I got. And I and then if I were going to write a review on this, which I haven't written a review. But if I were going to start writing a rhetorical analysis on this microphone in a review type of way, let's go about to see how would I start writing this and how would we start writing a rhetorical Amazon review on this thing. Okay, and I would encourage you uh, to jot down some of the things that we're going to be talking about so that you have a basic understanding of how to approach this. Okay, so here we go. First thing I would habits of mind. Now you remember this, we've talked about it before. This is one of the first things we discussed when we talked about the idea of rhetorical analysis, habits of mind. Do you remember the four steps? Observe, ask questions. The third one, That's right. Somebody said it. I heard it. Somebody said it. Examine alternatives. Someone did say that. I heard it. <laughs> okay. And the last one, empathize. Now, if I'm going to rhetorically analyze uh, this microphone, I would go through these four steps. Now, likely we go through these steps almost without realizing it when we're trying to review something. But identifying um, the steps in a more specific way is helpful. Observe. Now, if I'm going to observe this microphone, I'm going to, well, I obviously look at it, uh, <laughs> right? I'll look at the microphone, maybe some of its function knobs, I'll see if it plugs in, different things like that, and its cord, how long's the cord, and so many different things I could look at with this microphone, okay? Um, and then I can ask questions. Now, what sort of questions would I ask about a microphone? Well, I could ask a certain question of, does it work properly? Does it function properly? One and the same. Does it function properly, not just in recording sound, but in its stability? Does it stand upright? Does it, um, does it use a lot of power? Does it uh, look pleasing? Does it look like it's doing Anyways, I think you kind of get the idea. There's a lot of questions. <laughs> Sorry, I needed to burp. <laughs> I just had dinner. Um, so there's a lot of questions I could ask with this, right? Basically, one of the primary functions or questions I'll ask is on its purpose. What is the purpose of the microphone? And I'm going to ask questions on that. Does it work? Does it work the way I wanted it to? Does it meet my expectations? Okay, there's another thing. Does it meet my expectations? And expectations come from, well, it had four-star reviews or five-star reviews, and I don't think I'd give it a five-star, so maybe it didn't meet my expectations. Examining alternatives. We likely looked at other microphones, perhaps, or I did. I looked at other microphones that I could buy. Some were really expensive. Some were around the same price, but I based my 
purchase of that microphone off the other reviews and also how many reviews there were. So did I look at other alternatives? Yes, I did. And I examined them. And after observing and asking questions, um, I can also think in my mind, do, should I, and here's another ask questions, an ask question category. Let me rephrase that. After asking questions, I might ask this next question that would be examining alternatives. After I have experienced what this microphone can do, would I buy a different one? Looking back on it, that would be examining alternatives. Okay. And then empathize, meaning for what it's worth, the quality, the price, and everything, was it worth it? I mean, did this company really provide something that they said they would? And I look back and yeah, they did. Um, it worked well enough. It didn't do less than what they said it would. And it didn't do more than what they said it would as well. Okay. And so empathizing with a microphone sounds, sounds kind of weird, but yeah, I, I, you're empathizing really with the company and what they advertise this product to be. Was it accurate? Okay, and that's our next thing. You remember this, raw, relevant, reliable, accurate. Okay, if when I look at the purpose or what the company was saying about this product, Okay, this microphone, I could say right here, oh yeah, it was relevant. Whoops, I didn't mean to cross that out. Oh, that was kind of, that's, wow, those curves on that line are just really awesome. Anyway, let's try it with a, oh, nope, not as cool. When I try it on purpose, it doesn't work. Uh, relevant, reliable, and accurate are the things they advertised this microphone to be, this company. And what it says specifically on the box, also on the microphone itself, were they relevant? Was it reliable? Was it accurate? Yeah, I would say, yeah, yeah. The th what they advertised this microphone to be, yeah, I would agree with that it was all three of those things. So let's go to the next slide. So when I look back at this, um, I can ask myself all of the uh, habits of mind and raw um, ideas. Okay, and it, it over here, like at when we're thinking about raw, we can think about these things, the specifics over here. Did it do all of this? Okay, right here it says, a microphone for computer captures your voice properly, produces clear, smooth, and crisp sound without static noise. Great for gamers, streamers, isolating the sounds from the main source, separating them from any background noise. Okay, when I look at this, I can see, well, did it do all these things? Is this reliable information? Is this accurate information? And so these are all things you can look at as you actually analyze your product, what it, your object, whatever it is that you bought. And maybe it was a book or a movie, okay? And there's advertisements right here, or right here on Amazon for movies and books, okay? Or on the book itself, there's usually some quotations from other publishers or um, uh, movie reviewers and whatnot, okay? And so you can do habits of mind and raw with all any pro, any product really okay any product at all. So once I've analyzed it though, I am ready to begin. I'm ready to put my thoughts down on a piece of paper. There's one specific thing though that I need to make sure that I have, and that's this. I need to take a stand, or another way to say it. Take a stance. Meaning, uh, if I were to say take a stance, meaning I need to now make a claim on this product. Okay. Now, in my situation, I'm, I'm going to make a claim on the microphone. Okay. I need to take a position. I can't be neutral anymore on this microphone. I can't be just like, eh, 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 you should, you shouldn't. I don't know. You have to take a stand. Okay, you have to take a stand. So I decided to take a stand on this microphone. And so after taking a stand, I can put it into a thesis format. 
And here is my thesis. The Fafini, or Fifine, however that company pronounces it, the Fafini microphone is suitable for basic recording needs due to its price, sound production, and ease of use. There should be a period at the end of it. Let's just put one in. Okay, there we go. Okay, and it's ease of use. There's my stance. There's my claim. Okay, now one thing I want you to note here, as we've talked about, is this the only way to write this thesis? Can you write it a different way? Yes. Yes, you can. Here's one thing that you could do, and I'd like to show you this. And just notice what happens here. I'm going to show you a different version of the thesis. Due to its price, sound production, and ease of use, the Fafini microphone is suitable for basic recording needs. Yeah, this works as well. But notice what I did. The reasons come first. Price, sound production, and ease of use are my reasons for my claim. They are first, and then I made my claim. My claim is the Fafini microphone is suitable for basic recording needs. That's my claim. And then I have three reasons supporting that. Okay. So, and I didn't use because as well. Remember, it doesn't mean you can't use because, but we do not need that three becauses again. We don't need those. We can use because once, we could use due to, or a different variation that can maybe produce the same thing, or the same thing, uh, the same structure of our thesis, okay, a different phraseology. So I hope that makes sense, okay? Now, you don't need three reasons. You could use two. You can use even one. I'm going to ask you, though, to use two or more on this paper, okay? When we use one, it gets a little bit more broad, and we go into one reason for a long time, okay? And so I'd like you to practice using at least two or more on this paper, but when we get to our final paper of the school year, the biggest paper, the research project, you can use one, two, or three, okay? But you might find it might be difficult to use one on that bigger paper. Uh, but it's still, it still can be done, it still can be done, okay? So if this is my thesis, then that means that I am ready now to write my body paragraphs. That's if, if I've already written my um, introduction. So let's say I haven't written my introduction yet and I wanna write one. Um, Remember the ideas of general to specific and specific to general? And this is my last sentence then of the introductory paragraph. So how am I gonna write an introduction, general to specific or specific to general? What might be my first sentence of my paper? Now, to do that, you can look at clues and work backwards from your thesis. For instance, if I look at my object, Probably the most important word to identify what my object is, is microphone. Okay. Microphone is, it's a microphone. That's actually what my object is. I'm not going to really focus on Fafini uh, if I'm looking at the basic idea of what my microphone is or what the object is. Okay. Uh, so, if I were gonna work backwards, I might write a sentence about microphones, if I'm starting general, right? Like, or something about recording voice. I could say, it wasn't until the, whatever year it was that microphones were first invented, okay? It wasn't until this year such and such that a device was created to record someone's voice or other sounds. This later became known as the microphone. The microphone has been in use for such and such things, and people have used it from concerts to comedy performances to recording voices to amplifying voices and so on. Fafini is a brand of microphone that is selling their products on Amazon.com. And due to its price, sound production, and ease of use, the Fafini microphone is suitable for basic recording needs. 
So that's a general to specific thing. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, thank you. Well, first of all, thank you guys for putting up with my voice through this and sometimes my lack of clarity and different things. Uh, not feeling too great, too awesome right now, but it'll pass. It'll pass. Okay, now let's talk about the body. Okay, body paragraphs. Let's do a little bit of a reminder of what this is. Okay, this is from Ames University. A body paragraph is a group of related sentences about a particular topic or idea directly relating to the thesis. That's exactly what we need to remember, is directly relating to the thesis, okay? Because essays are composed of multiple body paragraphs, writing and organizing good paragraphs is one of the most important aspects of creating a well-organized and developed essay. We needed to go in a different voice for that. All right, let's move on. Okay, so there are three things that you need in a body paragraph. There is the topic sentence and supporting details. And lastly, concluding sentence. Okay, topic sentence must refer to the thesis and not just the thesis, but what specific reason are you referring to in this paragraph? Supporting details. Okay, that is really anything besides the topic sentence and concluding sentence is supporting details. It might be textual evidence. It might be anecdotal evidence. Anecdotal means personal evidence, thing you, uh, an experience you had with the product yourself and not just something that it, the box says or another reviewer said. Okay, supporting details. We'll talk about this a little bit more uh, in detail. A little later in detail <laughs> and concluding sentence this is going to be your transition uh, into your next sentence a little bit but it's going to kind of wrap it up of why you think that this idea or this reason proves that your thesis is correct okay and we'll move all right now believe it or not what you're looking at is a body paragraph Kind of weird i know but this is a body paragraph and i you know if we're to look at this body paragraph i don't i don't think too many people want to spend too much time here i mean it doesn't look extraordinarily fun extraordinarily cool uh, but you know yeah well, let me let me show you another picture of a body paragraph uh yeah don't you just want to walk on that? You just want to roll around in the sand, build a sand castle, and then destroy that sand castle. Yeah. <laughs> so why why would we compare these two um, pictures to body paragraphs? I want you to pause it for a second. Why would these two pictures represent body paragraphs? Okay, I'm going to leave it that. Um, and whatever ideas you came up with about how these two could represent body paragraphs and the differences between them, which one is a better body paragraph and why, okay, that will be helpful to identify. Okay. And lastly, supporting detail. Okay, let's not worry about that. Uh, we'll talk about that a little later, that there are some things that you guys are already doing it and you already have done it, but there's a couple things I want to share with you about how to make supporting detail even a little bit better call, uh, with quoting things. So uh, thank you for going through and uh, just listening to me discuss those different things. I hope this was helpful and a good reminder. Okay, get... You, the, first, the rough draft is going to be due November 30th, okay, November 30th, and you can be working on this already, uh, your Amazon review. And we are going to do something a little different than just a mere peer review when we do this rough draft. We're going to be looking at it in a little bit more detail. And I want you guys to feel free to send me your thesis statements and 
So you can email them to me and be like, hey, Mr. Ernest, is this a good thesis statement? And because sometimes a, a thesis statement should give us a good foundation from where to build on. Okay. So if you're wondering if this thesis statement is going to be suitable for your paper, just email it to me and I can send a quick email back and be like, hey, maybe change this or rock on, dude, or something of that nature. Okay. You guys are awesome. Um, just being... Being in Israel is wonderful and a fantastic experience, and I look forward to sharing a lot of these things with you guys. Um, but just know, like I, I miss you guys a lot. Like it's been a while. It's been like a week now since I've seen you guys, and um, I miss you. I hope you're doing great. I hope school, other classes are going good. I hope sports for those that are doing basketball and whatnot. That's going great and that um, choir, music, everything else in your life is just going awesomely because you deserve it. You truly deserve it. Uh, feel free to ask me any questions. Email me with anything. Thank you guys for putting up with this. This was kind of just an on-the-spot, impromptu thing uh, where we just started, just started recording. So I'm sorry for my thoughts being a little jumbled. And also, uh, apologies of probably, wait, let me ask you this question, which will lead into this apology. How many of you feel like a two by four? I mean, how many of you feel bored? <laughs> uh, bored. So hopefully this did not bore you too much, but hopefully it was a good and helpful reminder to get you started on what you needed to do. You're awesome. Talk to you later than this present moment. <laughs>